Hello, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. In a previous video, I demonstrated some of the features of On One Photo RAW and the masking tools there. In this video, I'm going to actually take that one step further and I'm going to show you how I edit some of my landscapes using On One Photo RAW. And I'm going to touch on a few new features that I didn't talk about in the previous video. So to start off with, here I am in Lightroom. I've got the photo open that I want to edit and I've made a couple of small adjustments so far. I've actually cleaned up one of the dust spots that was on the sensor around here. And I've also cropped the image slightly to cut out these trees at the side here and also to balance the sky in the foreground because I wanted the horizon somewhere around the middle. With those changed, I'm also going to change the colour profile that I use for the camera. As this was shot on a Fuji X-T2, I'm going to use the Provia standard. And that immediately makes an improvement to the colours. At the moment, if I look at the image, the sky is a little bit too bright. The colour isn't intense enough. And also the shadows and dark areas on the right side and also on the left side of the frame are just a little bit too dark. What I want to create is something that's vibrant, colourful, has a nice soft feel to it and still hasn't got too much contrast. And I also need it to feel like a sunset. When this picture was taken, the sun had actually set. Now looking at my histogram, I can see that I have quite a lot of information bunched into the dark shadow areas up here. So I'm going to now use the basic adjustments just to try to balance out the image a little bit more. So I'm going to open up the shadows there and I'm also going to reduce the highlights there to bring in some of the colour in the sky a little bit more strongly. Now you can see from the histogram that that's a well balanced image and at this stage I'm not going to try to make this look great. I'm going to actually do all that in On One Photo Raw. Now to open Photo Raw I'm just going to right click with the mouse, I'm going to choose Edit In and I'm going to actually choose the develop version of Photo Raw. So this is where we will do further adjustments to the image rather than focusing on adding lots of effects. Clicking that, Lightroom gives me the usual Lightroom dialog where I can pick what I want to do. As I'm working on a RAW file here, it only allows me to actually edit a copy of that with Lightroom adjustments applied. And I'm going to pick to edit into the PSD, so the Photoshop format. Now when Photo Raw starts, it gives me this nice option here of working on a smart photo. And that will allow me to retain any of the adjustments I make in case I want to go back and adjust them further in the future. So I'm going to take the smart photo option. So we've got our image now in the On One Photo Raw and we're in the develop module as you can see over here. In there, I've got two options. I can edit the global settings here or I can do local adjustments using this adjustment panel here. I'm going to start with overall settings. Now the first thing I want to do is just balance out the tones in the image. So to do that, I'm going to pull down my highlights and that immediately creates a nice soft feel to the image, boosts the color and gives me something that's more of what, what was appearing at the time in the scene when I was uh, shooting the image. I could push the whites up slightly, but that immediately causes all this area to blow out. So we won't do that. I'll just reset it. The other thing I could do is change the contrast and exposure. Well, the only thing I might do is open up these shadows still a little bit further, but I don't want to open them up too much. So it's only going to be marginal. And if you look at the midtones, that really doesn't have too much of an effect. Although I think I prefer going to the negative slightly. Now, something I'm going to show you, but we may not use at this stage, is just the haze slider. And this works a little bit like the dehaze slider in Lightroom. If I move this to the left, it actually removes haze from the scene. But it also boosts the colour and saturation in the image. And it's quite a strong effect. If I move it to the right, it seems to add haze in. So we may come back and use that, but I'd rather use it selectively at this stage. So let's keep that as my basic adjustments. And you can see if I click on the preview button here that already we've made quite a change just from applying those settings. If I now come over to my local adjustments, the first thing you should notice here is we have a mask option here. If 
I look at the overall settings, you don't have a mask option. So local settings work with masks so that you can actually apply your adjustments selectively to the image. Now one of the things I want to do with this adjustment is make the pinks in the scene in the clouds really stand out and become intense but at the same time I don't want to affect the blues in the sky and I'm going to intensify those separately. So to start off with let's look at creating a mask that will do that. So if I click on the mask there we can see at the moment it's all black and we can view that if we want to by clicking there. Now I'm going to create a luminosity mask first and if you view that you can see the pink areas are very light but it may not be precise enough for the adjustment we want to make. So I'll just go back to looking at the image now and you can see that's quite dark because we've got the exposure slider down here set to minus one. I leave it like that just so that you can see the effects when you create your mask. What I'm going to do here instead of using the luminosity mask is I'm going to create a color range and I'm going to use this picker to actually pick a color from the scene. I'll pick there and that's now sampled that and it's created me a mask based on the colors in the scene. I'm going to reset my exposure slider at this point and I'm going to start to intensify the color temperature in those areas so I'm happy with that I'm also going to reduce the highlights because when you reduce the highlights you also tend to intensify colors that are a little bit too too light and it by, by darkening them you also make them more visible to the viewer and the other thing you could do is boost up the vibrancy although at this stage I'm not going to do very much and if I look at the mask now you can see the areas are quite white the other areas are black and we're hiding for, um, we're hiding the adjustment from those areas now I'm just going to play with the levels here just to remove some of the other areas and basically focus in the color adjustments on the sky so that's created a mask that should show the color intensity in the areas where we've got the pinks and keep it a little bit away from the blues. So there's the adjustment. If I click the preview button you can see that's the original and that's the adjusted version at this stage and so it's starting to look actually quite good. We could add a little bit of contrast see if that does anything to the sky. Not really so we'll leave that slider alone at the moment. Now one of the other tools that I didn't demonstrate last time that I'm going to show you this time is this gear option here and this shows you the blending options that you've got available to but there's a really neat drop down here and what you can do is pick to apply to the highlights and in that way all the adjustments that we've just created with the layer mask are further being adjusted by this option here and you can use this range slider to broaden the range of what is considered a highlight or reduce the range. Now as I'm doing that you can see that over on the left where I've narrowed the range completely the blue is very intense if I move it over to the right it widens it out and some of the mid-tone values start to come in. Now the other thing we can do as well is we can protect the shadows from being adjusted. So we'll actually increase that shadow protection just a little bit and that stops the pink that we're adding from affecting any of the areas. Now there shouldn't be any areas that are affected really because we're applying to the highlights but it's worth knowing that you've got that ability to restrict some of the adjustments. So I'm happy with that now and they're going to add a new layer and again I'm going to create a color mask and this time I'm going to be picking blue. So that's picked the blue. I think I'm going to actually try and sample there again. Okay, happy with that. And now you can see the mask that's been created. 
and we can further refine that using the sliders if we want to but at this stage that's not really having much effect this color range slider has much greater effect here where you can go from not creating a mask to creating a very dark mask so I'm going to adjust that so that I keep out some of the areas I don't want to affect. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So the white areas are going to get affected by my adjustment. The dark areas aren't. And the adjustment I want to apply here is to increase the blue in the scene. And that creates me a quite a nice violet effect. And I can also boost some of the, some of the pinks in the scene and increase our vibrancy very slightly and if I want to I can reduce the exposure as well of those areas I'm quite happy with no, how that's now appearing I can if I want to adjust the structure and actually some negative structure helps to soften the areas very slightly. So I now quite like that change. Let's have a look at the preview. So that was the original after we brought it in from Lightroom. That's the adjusted image. I'm now quite happy with that, but I want to actually add just a couple of other things. I'm going to add a glow effect because I quite like what that does to the image. And I'm also going to add a vignette to the image. Now I could do them over in this overall settings because the show more button here allows me to add both the glow and the vignette, but I'm not going to, I'm going to hop over to the effects program. And now I can actually choose to add some filters. So the first one I'm going to add is actually the color enhancer. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to adjust how some of the oranges and yellows in the scene actually appear. So at the moment I've got the orange selected and I can actually push that over to on the hue to the red side or I can push it over to yellows. And actually I quite like it going more towards the yellow. I'm going to widen the range that that affects and I'm going to reduce the brightness in that range very very slightly and now yellows I'm going to actually push those over towards the orange uh, just a little bit more I'll widen the range again so I'm affecting more of the the clouds and I'm going to increase the saturation very slightly but I'm also going to just increase the brightness because I want to create a little bit more contrast between the different colors in the scene. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Again, if I want to, I can protect the shadows from any adjustment. So that helps decontaminate the, the shadows and it also creates more of a natural look. Overall, I think I may want to just warm the image more and I think I'll boost the saturation, oh sorry, the vibrancy, just slightly. Next, I'm going to add the glow effect. Now we could end up making this a little bit too strong, but we'll see how it works. I'm going to increase the amount first off, and then I'll increase the halo. And that's creating quite a strong effect, but it's also causing the blacks and the shadow areas to just block up. So what I want to do again is create my masking option. I'm going to create a luminosity mask. And we'll just view the mask so you can see it. So again, it's a straightforward mask. I'm going to actually cause some of the darks to, to block up. I want to keep the, the overall glow effect quite restricted to the sky and the distant hills. So I'm happy with how that's looking. Maybe we can just adjust that further
So I'm using the sliders here just to affect the luminosity mask. And the reason I'm working on the mask is I understand quite well what the mask is doing to my image as I'm doing it. So I'd rather do that than receive the feedback from the actual image as I work. The other thing I'm going to do is just feather the mask very slightly to help us blend the glow adjustment a little bit more. I'll switch back to the image now. And you can see there the glow effect, very subtle on the sky. We may actually increase that now a little bit further in the amount and widen the halo. And that's creating quite a nice effect now. And again, check my overall preview. That was the original image. That's the adjusted image. And I'm now going to add my final vignette. I'm going to use the big softy. I really like the, uh, the soft effect of the, vi the vignette on this. And I'm going to reduce the size down. And I'm just going to ease off the brightness very slightly because it was a little bit too intense. One of the things that happens when you apply a darkening vignette, if you've noticed, is it intensifies the colour yet, yet again. If I want to try to control it a little bit, I can use this opacity slider until it reaches the level that I like. And that looks about, about right. So I'm now happy with that. Check it against the original preview. That was the original. That's the adjusted image and that's now appearing much more as the scene I remembered at the time. I can now click done and I make the into Lightroom. Now I'm back in Lightroom and because I created my original image from Lightroom, it added it to my Lightroom catalog. So here you can see the image that we've just created. If I go back to magnify it, that's the adjusted image with all the adjustments complete. I hope you found this example of editing with On One useful and that you saw some of the masking features in use. I'm Robin Wally. You've been watching Lenscraft. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and please share the video. I'll see you in the next episode.